Hey guys, Anthony here with We Back Tesla, and We Back Tesla because if Tesla fails, the acceleration to a sustainable future fails, and we can't have that. So please consider subscribing, become a part of the solution, and when you make the awesome decision of purchasing your Tesla, you can use our referral link down below, get you some free supercharging. But that's enough of that, because today's video is very exciting and very important, so please stick with me. Today, I wanna to do my best to try to convince everyone out there you would be silly not to consider a Tesla as your next vehicle. And to help me do this, I'm gonna be showing Tesla's latest software update that I just got which is 2019 16.2 and it has one of the most important features in my opinion called lane departure avoidance so we're going to test that out a little bit later in this video and a common question that i haven't seen answered related to the lane departure avoidance feature is will it be available to cars that don't have autopilot and don't have full self-driving well i'm pleased to say that you do not need autopilot or full self-driving to have this feature because i just got done with my free trial which is very sad but i'm very happy to see that this feature is standard. One very important thing that I want you to understand about this is that I didn't have to go trade in my car, upgrade to the latest model year of car to get this feature. All I had to do is while I was sitting on the toilet, I received a notification on my phone. And since I don't have any friends and I mostly annoy my wife, I knew that this had to be a software update for Ghost, which is what I named my Tesla. Do you guys name your cars? Is that a weird thing to do? If you did, what'd you name your car? And if you didn't, make fun of me down below. But if your car doesn't get continuous software updates like this that make your car funner and safer, like I'm gonna demonstrate with this new lane departure avoidance feature, then what are you doing? And how can you just accept that when this is here and available now? I strongly encourage you guys to consider becoming one of us. But seriously, just you gotta consider it. So let's go ahead and just run through the, the highlights of this update. So as you guys can see, I'm running with 2019.16.2. Let's go ahead and look at the release notes. So I'm just gonna go through the highlights of this. You can pause it and read the descriptions if you'd like. So driving visualizations, I'll go ahead and show you guys that. When we get driving, sentry mode improvements. One improvement is you can turn it on and off right up here with this icon, awesome. Let's see, lane departure avoidance and emergency lane departure avoidance. So this is what we're going to be testing right after this software update preferences. So this will allow us people who are impatient to get software as soon as it's available for our car. Swedish language support. I don't speak Swedish, but hey, if you do, there you go. So for the feature that we're going to be testing out today, I think you got to go to autopilot. And as like I said, I don't have autopilot or full self driving. And it doesn't look like you need either of those to take advantage of this new safety feature. So right here, emergency lane departure avoidance. So I already have it turned on. I haven't tried it yet. I was playing with it earlier when I got the software update, but I turned that on and I'm gonna switch this to assist. Let's go ahead and look at this. So lane departure avoidance will warn or assist with corrective steering when your vehicle starts to drift out of the lane. So we're gonna test this out. And as it says, it won't do it all the time. There might be times that it might not work. So just like autopilot, you have to be paying attention. Don't listen to all the stupid headlines like from Consumer Reports about autopilot. Autopilot is an assistance feature. These are assistance features. They do not make the car fully autonomous. We're not even there yet. They just make your driving experience a safer one. So now that we have those settings set, let's go ahead and start driving. One thing before we get too far, I want to do a comparison or just show you guys these new visualizations. I don't know if you can see that, but there's stars reflecting on the roof of the car. That's freaking awesome. The details in this are just insane. When I make a turn, you'll see the car actually turns on the screen. Oh man, that's awesome. All right, let's go ahead and give this a try. There's no traffic on this road, so I'm not gonna touch the steering wheel. Let's see, I'm gonna come up here. I don't wanna hit the curb. So I'm gonna see if I can get it to drift to the left without touching the steering wheel and see what it does. I'm not touching, not to, oh! And it just pushed me back into the lane. Let's try it again. I'm not touching, not touching. And I drifted. <laughs> so as Tesla says, it doesn't work all the time. All right, let's just let this drift to the middle a little bit, see what happens. 
There you go. No warning that time. Just blue line and it pushed me back into the middle of the lane. I'm not sure what the difference is, why it gives me a warning sometimes or why it just does it. But I'm glad it does it nonetheless. All right, let's drift to the right this time. Towards the curb, towards the bike lane. All right. Warned me that time by the bike lane. Let it drift back to the middle. Let's see what happens. Yep, warning. I'd say this is working. All right, so what did you guys think of that? I thought that was fantastic. That was awesome, especially since I don't have autopilot or full self-driving and I get that feature just for free, standard. And I got it over the air. I didn't have this yesterday. I didn't have it when I bought the car, but now I have it. And when I drive this car or my wife drives this car, we're going to be safer for it. So like I said before, if your car doesn't do this, if it doesn't get these kinds of updates, over the air all the time. I just do not understand how you couldn't consider this car as your next car. I don't care if it's five days from now, five months from now, or five years from now, these cars have to be considered. So the car I'm sitting is in one of Tesla's entry level cars, which is the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. And I have a bunch of videos going over this car and hopefully it can give you guys some insight into what the entry level Tesla is like to live with. How does it perform? So please go check out our other videos on this because this car is really capable and it's worth every penny. And even without all the environmental benefits of this car. So you could be a climate denier, it doesn't matter. This car stands above the rest, electric or not. Tell me what you guys think about this car. Tell me what you think about that feature that we just tested out. If you guys have any questions specifically about this car that I can help you with or just living with an EV in general, if you're just curious, please leave them down below. And you can find me on Twitter at WeBackTesla. I don't know really how to use Twitter. I'm trying to figure it out, but you can go follow me there. Ask me questions. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. I hope I've at least intrigued any of you guys that are on the fence about it. And for those of you that are already part of the team, thank you for the support and I'll see you guys in the next one.